All right, so in the MSO, in the material editor, the site MSO, we're gonna go from the house one to the site one, and we're gonna work on, um, wait a minute, okay. So in order to do the grass, since it's displaced, it needs to be on its own, it needs to be its own object. So it is actually not attached to the MSO for the site. So what you're gonna wanna do is next to the site MSO, you wanna click to the slot next to it and you're gonna use the eyedropper and click on your grass, which is here. And you're gonna see that it just has a, a generic material assigned to it. Right. We're gonna rename this material to grass. And again, we're gonna clear out the diffuse and this time we're gonna actually put a bitmap into the diffuse channel. So we're gonna click on this. We're gonna type in bitmap. And we're, you're gonna have to find where those files are that I gave you, which they are under documents. So in that file structure, they're gonna be underneath textures and grass. So now that you have that the bitmap loaded, you're going to want to make it where you can actually see it on your object. If you click on the show standard map and viewport, you're going to see that. Why is that? Okay. Uh, so what you're going to have to, if you right click and isolate selection. With, you're just going to have your grass. So make sure you have your grass selected. Right click and do isolate selection. And you're going to have just have your grass. So we're going to have to go backwards a little bit because that material that we were working with was assigned to some stuff on the inside of the house. So what we're, we're going to kind of go over creating this, the grass again. We're going to just click on a random material slot like the one in the bottom left hand corner. Yeah. And then you're going to the new material? Well, what happened, I, the material that I was changing is on the inside of the building. So what I need to do is create a new material and assign it to the grass. So we're going to dump that material that we're working with. We're going to just create a new grass material and assign it to the grass. So in the bottom left-hand corner, just click on a material that's blank and not used in the scene right now. And we're going to change the name of this to grass. And we're going to drag and drop it onto the grass. And if it's, this is because I created that one before, we're going to rename this and I'm going to call it real grass. And just to make sure that this is assigned to it, I'm going to temporarily just turn the diffuse to some color so we know. And I'm going to exit out of isolation mode. And we'll see that now the grass is really the only thing being affected before that material was assigned to some other stuff. So we're going to add that bitmap that we we're going to do before by clicking next to the diffuse channel typing in bitmap and inside of that file structure in the textures folder there's a grass map you double click that and show in viewport and you're going to see that it turns green but you don't see the pattern of the of the grass so again you're going to click on the grass and you need to put the UV map on it so it knows how to scale the grass material so UV map is underneath modifier list it's at the bottom and it's just UV map. And now you can start to see it's applying that texture. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into a box and set it to 12 foot by 12 foot by 12 foot. And now you can actually see the, the grass material. I'm just gonna isolate it temporarily so you can see. So a lot of times what I'll do for like grass is since it's gonna be so repetitive with such a small box, I'll make this a little larger, like 36 by 36 by 36. So I'm going to leave it like that. Is everyone following along? We're going to displace this grass so it actually has dimension to it. So if, if you were just doing some simple model and didn't want to have, you know, the photorealistic grass that takes a while to render, that would be a good place to be right there. But I'm going to take it and put a displace material on it. So I'm going to isolate the grass again. 
by right clicking on it and doing isolate. And what we're actually going to assign under the modifier list, at the very bottom there's V-Ray Displace modifier. And we're going to switch it from 3D mapping to 2D mapping. And we're in, in the texture map, this is where you would put the map that's going to displace the grass. So we're going to click that. We're going to type bitmap again. And in that same folder where the grass was, there's a grass displace texture. So what it's going to do, it's going to displace this grass based on the, the colors of that texture map. And then, so now what you do is the amount and shift. Amount is going to be how far it displaces it. So we'll start with six inches. And shift would be if you wanted to send it down and then it'll come up. So if you do like minus one inch, it'll actually extrude five inches. Well, it extrudes six inches, but starting one inch down. And then what I typically do is I turn down this resolution because this is what makes it take forever to render displacement. So I'll go resolution 200 and precision three. And I'm just gonna run a preview and this is just gonna be of the grass by itself because it's isolated. It might take a while. Oh. Yeah. So you can, okay. So I'm gonna just take off the displacement modifier and do that again. So under the modifier list, at the bottom is V-Ray Displace Mod. I'm gonna add that. It defaults to 3D mapping, but I flipped it to 2D mapping. And then in the texture map is where we're gonna sign that that image, which is a bitmap, so you type in bitmap, and it's grass displace. And then the other, and then you change the amount it's displaced. This is how like long the grass is, and then shift is how far it, it'll set it down and then extrude it. So I set that to six inches with no shift, and then the resolution I set to two hundred with precision three. Yeah. Oh, you're going over here. So the, the resolution is 200 and the precision is 3. And I'll just render it. And the, the resolution and precision is what's going to control how long this takes. So typically you just want to set it as low as you can before it doesn't, you know, it starts to look bad. And if you're running something, you know, high resolution, maybe at the end you crank those settings up. To what? Uh, we can, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much materials, unless there's anything specific people want to see. I'm just going to go to putting in the entourage. <laughs> yeah, OK. So we can open up. We'll open up the textures file, which is number three. And this is going to have the building fully textured. So if, if you want to steal these materials, you could. Um, they're relatively simple materials. So what I was going to go over now is there's some models that I've put in that folder that uh, we're going to drag into here just to give you an idea how to like put um, dra drag and drop models in, how to make them instanced, and creating a proxy. Uh, a proxy pretty much just stores all the geometry in a different file, and it references it. And that way, when you're moving around your file, it moves quickly, and then when you render it, it actually looks for the information. It makes file management a lot easier than having a million polygon tree in the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop some of the stuff in there, and you guys can do the same. The first thing I have here is a 3D woman that I'm just going to drag and drop, and you want to do merge. And when you do that, it should place her. You can just click again, and it'll put her somewhere, and if you hit T and Z, you're going to zoom onto her. F3 switches from wireframe to shaded. I'm just going to go to F3, and I'm just going to move her using the move tool up here to somewhere in the scene. And then P goes to perspective, and then Z zooms again. And I'm just going to make sure that she's actually standing on the ground. 
and then I'm going to rotate her using the rotate tool. And see, go back to the camera. So she's actually in the file. Put her somewhere so we can see her. And I'm just going to copy the same person around just to give you an idea. Um, anytime you're copying something in a file that's identical, you want to make sure you do instance because it'll recalculate. It speeds up the process, especially with trees. If you have high polygon trees and you do copy, it's going to calculate those each of the trees. If you do instance, it'll significantly save you on render time. So making sure you do instance when you can is important. So I'm just going to put one more person up closer to the building. Um, I'm trying to think what else we have here. Okay, so I'm going to go over creating a proxy. I, I recommend doing this for trees and landscaping, anything that's really high polygon because it's going to save you um, on render time and work. It mainly saves you on working in the file so you can actually move around. If you put like 10 of these trees in your file, you probably won't be able to move unless they're a proxy. So this 009. We might not have, well, I'm going to try this 009 proxy thin. I'm going to drag and drop this in and do merge. It's already proxied, which is, I'm wondering if, okay, so this is, it's already proxied here, so you can see that you can flip between a box, which it'll move through really quickly, and preview, which you'll get a rough idea what it's going to look like. So usually what I do is I'll place it with it as a preview. And then turn it to box once it's placed. I'm going to Okay, I'm going to actually just turn one of these women into a proxy just to show you how to do a proxy. I don't have the tree unproxied. So just so you have an idea. And then that'll show you how to do the path and all that stuff. So if you click on this girl here, imagine this being a tree. I don't have the tree, so I'm just going to use this woman. I'm going to right click and isolate her so we can see what we're doing. If you right click and do V-Ray Mesh Export, click that. What's going to happen, it's going to pop up. And you're going to want to make sure you put this somewhere where you know you're saving it. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now believe yeah and then the only thing you need to switch is automatically create proxies so when it's done creating the proxy it's just going to link it into the file and then faces in preview you can turn this number down but the more you turn it down the harder it's going to actually be to see what the geometry is so I usually set this like 5,000 and if you hit OK you're going to see that she turns into a proxy I believe Yeah, so now she's actually a proxy. And you can see that you no longer have the ability to see her shaded. She's just mesh data. And she's simplified, so she, it's going to be a lot quicker on the machine. And it's actually pathed here, you can see, to the desktop. You're going to want to save that file wherever you, know, you want to have it so you can move it around. And then just make sure that you link to it. So right now it's sitting on the desktop, and it's a V-Ray mesh file. And you can make it where she's just a box. And again, this is more important for trees and bushes and stuff like that, but I was just using that as an example. So then I was going to, I'll drag the car into here. And again, there's, there is actually a non proxy version of the car here. And there's a proxy version. So I'm going to drag the proxy version into here and just do merge again. I'm just going to put it into place. There should be a little thing that says exit somewhere.
So now I have the car sitting there. So I'm going to render this. I'm going to turn off displacement just so this renders at a decent amount of time. And the way to do that is underneath the V-Ray tab. At the top, there's an option for geometry and displacement. I'm just going to uncheck that. And I'm just going to render a preview of this at a better resolution just so we can see where we're at. Some sort of floating plane. Yeah. Not sure what that plane is. I'm going to figure it out here in a second. I don't know why it appeared. Okay, so the one thing that I I didn't go over earlier was how this guy went from that V-Ray sky that was just solid without clouds. So I was going to kind of go over creating a sky with clouds using an HDRI map. Under rendering at the top, go to environment. And you're going to see that now there's a sky with a mix in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to recreate this. So in the material editor, if you just make it a new a bottom right slot, we're going to call it New sky. Instead of, I was just going to create a sky. A sky, yeah, and then just replace that sky. Or right what I can, yeah. So, under new sky, you're going to click on V ray material. I think you can get a V ray sky here. Maybe not. All right. So, we, we'll go back a file. That way it's actually there. So, we'll just go back to. File number one, since I skipped the uh, creating of the sky. So if you go back to the, that ain't gonna work. Try actually, let's use file number two because this actually has lighting set up in the sky already there. Okay. So under rendering, is everyone at in file two yet? Actually, I wait a second. All right, I'm going to just go over how to create this, this sky. So what we're going to do is in the environment channel, we're going to clear out this old sky just because we don't want it anymore. And that way we can start from scratch. So we're going to click on where it says none. We're going to type in V-Ray sky. And now we have a V-Ray sky there, which is what you would have had when you first create your sun. And we're going to drag this into the material editor, make sure it's instanced. And we're going to change the name to sky. And you're going to see that now over here it says sky instead of your default V-Ray sky. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We click on manual sun node. And we're going to click on our sun, which was hidden. So shift L is a shortcut for hiding and unhiding suns. So you're going to have to hit shift L to get your sun to appear. And then on your sun node, you're going to click on your sun and see now that it's listed here. So now if we render this, we're going to see that our sky is super bright. We're going to want to turn it down. We're going to go to 0.4 for the intensity. And now it, it looks reasonable. So now what we want to do is mix in those clouds using an HDRI map. And what we're going to do is where it says V-Ray Sky, we're going to click on this and we're going to type in Mix. 
and you're going to want to keep the old map. So now you're going to have an extra channel to mix in with the channel that you already have, which is the sky. So you're going to hit OK. And so now you see you have color one, color two. It's going to mix your sky with whatever you put here. And what we're going to put here is a V-Ray HDRI. So if you click this, type in V-Ray HDRI. And what an HDRI is, it's a what we have, it's a 360 degree photo of a, a sky that actually has lighting data in it as well. So we're going to use this to blend with the V-Ray sky to give us the, the clouds, which are nice for reflections and stuff like that. So we're going to browse to the folder. Under textures, it's not it. Oh, okay, I was wondering where everything else, yeah. So under textures, it's gonna be 106. This is the HDRI image, you're gonna load that in. And you're gonna set it to spherical, so it actually wraps it. So any direction you look, you'll actually have sky. So you're gonna flip it from angular to spherical. And the rotation is actually, if you wanted to spin it and see a different aspect, you know, part of the sky in your background, we're gonna leave that at zero and zero. And we're gonna turn up the overall multiplier and render multiplier. That's what controls the intensity of it. We're just going to set them to three. And I'm going to go back to the sky. So I'm going to click on this arrow, go up to sky. And it, I'm going to adjust this mix amount. To, I just want to see if I go to 100, 100% is going to be completely the bottom color and zero is going to be completely the top. So we're going to want to do something closer to the image as opposed to the V-Ray sky. So I'm going to set it at 70% and I'm just going to run a preview to see what we have. So now you can start to see the clouds, but it's really dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the HDRI and I'm going to turn up the overall multiplier and render multiplier. I'm going to double them. So six and six, and I'm gonna hit render again and see what it looks like now. So it's a little better. I'm gonna adjust it one more time. I'm gonna go nine and nine. And render. So that's probably pretty good. So that's how you would create this sky with the clouds in it, is using a V-Ray sky and an HDRI. You could actually do all HDRI, but it's, it's nice to have the V-Ray sky mixed in because it's accurate to where your sun is. So it, it'll give it a little more realism. Um, trying to think of, is there anything else related to lighting and materials you guys want me to go over? If not, that's kind of it.